banks should work hard for your money too. That's why we specialize in turning ordinary, middle class people like yourself into multi-contrillionaires. Just listen. I started off with a $300 savings account, and two years later, my net worth is approximately $8.2 gazillion. We turned our life savings of $85 over to Davidson Bank. And uh, yeah, we got a hot one. Everybody at the ready. Okay, folks, we're getting close. Ten seconds. Be careful out there. Run the balloon check. Six. Five. Can you fade to black? Three. You're just calling to annoy us. Please wait for the beep, then hang up. Hey, Cookie here. I've got a reality show for you. My dad yelled horrible things at me as a child. There's your reality show. Just you? Great. Looks like I'll have to do all the heavy lifting. And your wrong answer of the game is being sponsored by Blood Co. All your blood needs without the mess and fuss. Any type, any thickness, any gender. Blood Co. And so it begins. Right off the top, can't we all just get along, John? What do donut rivals Dunkin' Donuts and Krispy Kreme have in common? Onomatopoeia, alliteration, assonance, or illusion? Bam! That's wrong. I don't know what you're alluding to, but it's wrong. I believe now you're just pulling guesses out of your assonance. Here's what a right answer looks like. Alliteration is the repetition of the first sounds and words. And both da unkin da onuts and Karispi Kareem have that. So you see, they're not so different after all. You know what? Tomorrow morning, I'm going to eat a Dunkin' Donut and a Krispy Kreme at the same time and poop them out later in one unified poop of compassion and understanding. And now, space, the final front ear. If Star Trek's Mr. Spock decides to have his ears vulcanized, what will be true about them? His ears will be rounder, his ears will be stronger, his ears will be larger, or his ears will hear better. You know what they say about big ears? It's the wrong answer. What? What? The choice you have made is highly illogical. Watch how easy this is. Vulcanization is the process where rubber is converted to stronger, more durable materials. So Mr. Spock's pointy ears would become stronger. Which would be great because then it would be easier for Scotty to use them to open his beer bottles. Take a stab at... Biblo blah blah. What biblical album title would be appropriate for a Kesha album featuring different versions of her song Blah Blah Blah? Pillar of Salt, Jonah and the Whale, The Tower of Babel, or Birth of Jesus? You know, I'm just happy to see the word pillar with two exclamation points in it. I don't think people get excited enough about pillars. Now's about the time you start to blubber. Nope. No, I think that third wise man was known as a real chatty Kathy. Dude, seriously, we know you're smart already. <laughs> Allow me. The Tower of Babel is a story in the book of Genesis where God confused the language of all humans so they could no longer understand each other. <laughs> Thing is, I speak English and I still have no idea what the f*** Kesha is talking about. Everybody quite drunk. Everybody quite drunk. Hey. I call this one Undead Anatomy. Which of these movie monsters is truly heartless? The Mummy, Dracula, Frankenstein's Monster, or the Wolfman? But you have to ask yourself, who's really the monster? I vote you. Your score is about to go through a horrible transformation. One right answer coming up. A mummy's organs are removed and placed in jars during mummification, so the mummy would not have a heart. 
Though mummification was perfected over thousands of years, the Egyptians always had difficulty removing the water on the knee without the tweezers touching the metal sides of the game board. Then what is that red stuff shooting out of his chest when he gets a stake in the heart? What is it? Why, it's blood, of course! You just won blood! From Blood Co. We have blood! Why do you need to know where it came from? This wrong answer of the game has netted you an extra 4,000. Congratulations. Where's the bomb, girl? Rock my world, girl. Ooh, yeah. This one's known as... Your hair smells like blackberry. And it's a dis or dat. I'm gonna read off seven phrases. For each one, tell me if it's... A feature of the Nexus One phone... A feature of Nexus Shampoo, or both. If it's about the Nexus phone, press the square button. If it's about Nexus Shampoo, press your circle button. If it's both, press the X button. Each one right gets you 300 weekend minutes. But get one wrong and 300 drops faster than your ego on a bad hair day. You got 30 seconds before the dam breaks. Cool, let's do it. Anti-breakage system. Digital compass. Volume control. Noise cancellation. 100,000 to 1 contrast ratio. Heat protection. Not tested on animals. Nice shine. That performance was like a Bluetooth. Sure, it got the job done, but doesn't it kind of make you look like a crazy person? I'm gonna have to enforce some roaming fees for roaming so far away from the correct answers. If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and get smarter first. All this talk of phones and shampoo reminds me I need to go to the beauty parlor and make an appointment for my permanent. <laughs> Round one is complete. <laughs> and from the look of your score, we didn't get out of there soon enough. Keep in mind, in round two, everything is worth twice as much. Okay, let's do this. Coming up next... Where the Banshees live, and they do live well. How tall is the tallest stone at Stonehenge? Two Sharon Stones high, three Joss Stones high, four Oliver Stones high, or five Stone Phillipses high? That reminds me of my favorite Joss Stone song, in that I don't know any Joss Stone songs, and you don't know the answer to this question. <laughs> Five Stone Phillips is high? The man's six foot two. Are you trying to scare every living man, woman, and child to death with this 30-foot news magazine anchor monstrosity? <laughs> I'm stabbing your score with an ice pick. <laughs> Let me show you something. Oliver Stone is 6 feet tall. The tallest stone at Stonehenge is about 24 feet tall. So you could stack four Oliver Stones on top of each other to reach that high. The only difference between Stonehenge and four Oliver Stones on top of each other is... I'd be upset if Stonehenge fell over. Question 7! Next. I'd like to return this maid a milking, please. If you had to individually wrap all the items from the song The 12 Days of Christmas, how many packages would you end up with? 12, 42, 78, or 144? A wrong answer in a pear tree. Great, you've upset the six geese laying. It's their nap time. I see what you did there, 12 times 12. And here's your lump of coal. Here's what you meant to pick. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 plus 11 plus 12 equals 78 individually wrapped gifts. You might want to invest in a large mallet, too. The Lords of Leaping are a lot easier to wrap when they're unconscious. Plucking chickens, picking out a mate. Mary Take a good look at who sort of said this more or less. 
It's time for a who said it question. Now, Chad, our production assistant, will hand me a piece of paper with a famous quote and- Wait, you need that now? Yeah. Didn't get the email? I told you, man. For business-related stuff, you gotta message me on Facebook. So you don't have the quote? No. But I remember it, I think. Well, let me take a stab at it. (sighs) Okay. Who said, uh, Chad? Um, if you poke my eye out, then, um, I poke out yours, then the whole world isn't gonna see anything that well, I guess. Abraham Lincoln, Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., or Mother Teresa? Hey, I have a dream. I dreamed that you'd get that right. (laughs) How's that? Awful. (laughs) Sorry, bro. It's a no-no for the Momo. (laughs) No, man. I'm almost positive that's wrong. (laughs) Here's where the money is. Oh, wait. I found the quote. An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. And that was said by Mahatma Gandhi. Hey, that's pretty right on. I think I'm going to start following this Gandhi guy on Twitter. Thanks for your help, Chad. May I introduce a barrel of donkeys? Which element of the classic arcade game Donkey Kong does not represent a simple machine? The stack of barrels, the slanted girder ramps, Jumpman's hammer, or Donkey Kong's elevators? The slanted girders are inclined planes, and I'm inclined to tell you to stop playing this game. (coughs) Haven't you ever heard of a pulley? Well, apparently you're not as intelligent as an 8-bit ape. (coughs) No, Jumpman's hammer is a classic lever, as in, I don't think you'll ever be good at video games. (coughs) Where's that confounded right answer? The ramps are inclined planes, the hammer is a lever, and the elevators are pulleys. But Donkey Kong's barrel stack just sits there and it's not any kind of simple machine. I've always wondered what's in those barrels. I'm guessing thousands of rotting princess torsos. Hold me, never let me go. Here's one I like to call in bed. This is the part of the game where I start to feel like I need a little snack. Maybe I'll have a fortune cookie. Cookie, fortune cookie, fortune quest. Cookie, fortune cookie, necessary. Mm, you have an unusually magnetic personality. Hmm. Well, if I'm so friggin' magnetic, who's most attracted to me? Iron Man, Gold Member, the Tin Man, or the Silver Surfer? Can. And this fortune says, you're about to lose a bunch of money. Yeah, I refuse to do any Austin Powers character voices, so you're just wrong. It's so obvious. Magnets barely attract gold or silver and mostly know with tin, but they sure do love iron. And if I were really magnetic, the last place I should be is near all this expensive electronic equipment. Brace yourself for the attack. When you see two clues that match, press the X button. 4,000 bucks if you're right, but say goodbye to 4,000 if you're wrong. And don't ever forget... Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Yeah, you. Spooked me all night long. I'm bringing Spooky back. Good luck.
Not bad, but don't get too cocky. I happen to know that you'll soon be haunted by a large, messy burrito for a long and uncomfortable amount of time. Well, that's over. In honor of your meager winnings, we have some of your friends and family here to congratulate you. Uh, Cookie, sorry. None of the people we called would agree to come in. Did you tell them who it was for? Oh, yeah. In fact, most of them were pretty excited to do it until we told them who it was for. Hmm. Yeah, that seems about right. Ooh, look at all that money you won. What are you going to buy with that? Movie rental? Second-hand sweater? A shuttle bus to the airport to take an exciting flight that you'll have to pay for separately? Because this is not enough money to fly anywhere fun? Your options are limited! You will be visited by three spirits. Each one will ask you, What the f*** happened earlier in the game? There isn't anything I want to say more than you'll get them next time, kid. But that's because I get excited by lying, which was also a lie, so I'm really turned on right now. Or am I? You must be one of those ironic players. You do really poorly, try to make some sort of personal commentary by getting everything wrong like you don't even care, because you've got more important things on your mind. Right? Right? Just run with it. This is the closest you're going to get to a compliment. You will be cursed to forever repeat this jack attack for all eternity! Woo! Woo! Isn't this a really great ghost voice? I've been practicing! Woo! You don't know Jack! Nice one, folks. Okay, Danny, let us know what we're doing. All right, then. Have you any tinkling for jumping back into the proceedings? Have you ever felt like a real bore at a party? Then how about a class at Gil's Celebrity Voice?